Hello, you're listening to Sarah McCoy, and this is Choices, a new weekly podcast series. I've been a Bible teacher at Owasso First Assembly in Owasso, Oklahoma, for over 40 years, and I love the way God's Word shows itself practical to today, time after time. In 2015, I wrote a book entitled The Beauty of Holy Choices, which examines people from the Bible who pleased God by making a hard choice in a difficult circumstance. Each of the 12 chapters is a standalone story, and they're all woven together by their emphasis on holiness, arranged in the order in which they appear in Scripture. Each unit ends with clear application to today's Christian walk and a challenge to the reader. This first installment is entitled, God is Seated in the Temple, and all the scripture is taken from the New International Version. King Uzziah, who was also called Azariah, reigned over Judah for some 52 years, from about 799 to 748 BC. He was just 16 years old at his coronation, and he was mostly good, as his father Amaziah and grandfather Joash had been, as we read in 2 Kings 15 and 2 Chronicles 26. During his reign, the prophet Isaiah was born, and the city of Rome was founded. Unfortunately, Uzziah overstepped his authority when he was about 62 by offering incense in the temple. The Torah expressly forbids anyone but the priests from doing this job, as you can read in Numbers 16.40 and Numbers 18.7. But Uzziah was prideful because he had been successful in a series of battles. When a company of 80 priests confronted him, Uzziah got angry. The Lord immediately struck him with leprosy. And from that day on, Uzziah lived in a leper colony while his son reigned in his stead. Uzziah's death in 748 B.C. was the end of an era for Judah. Most of the population had never known any other king but him. He was a strong leader, a God-fearing man, a good organizer, and an advancer of technology. See 2 Chronicles 26, 9 through 15. Sadly, when he should have been coming to the height of his glory, as his successes piled up and his wisdom grew, he blew it instead. His leprous body became repulsive, and he had to be quarantined with the other untouchables. The same year that Uzziah was buried, the prophet Isaiah had a vision of another king. This king wasn't partly good and partly bad like Uzziah had been. This king wasn't aging as time went by, growing weaker and sicker. This king was unbelievably glorious, and Isaiah was awestruck and even horrified by his holiness. Isaiah 6, 1 through 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. 
God wears a robe? There's smoke in heaven? What could all this imagery mean? Isaiah has blessed us with a metaphor of God's beautiful holiness. His creatures, whoever these servants called seraphs actually are, seem to be modest for they cover their faces in their feet. Why would a sinless heavenly being use two wings to cover its face? Covering the face shields it from whatever it is exposed to and also keeps it from being viewed. We conclude that God's holiness is so glorious, so brilliant, and so full of energy that it's too much for the seraphs to bear directly. They must cover themselves. Moses reacted in a similar way when he had an encounter with God at the burning bush in the Egyptian desert. Exodus 3, 5 and 6. Don't come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. See what I'm talking about? Moses couldn't stand to look at God's majesty either. It was just too intensely fabulous to take in. Back to Isaiah 6. Note the reaction of the seraphs to God's presence. Overwhelmed, all they could do was cry holy again and again. As people spontaneously say, ooh and ah, at the beauty of fireworks in the sky on July 4, so the seraphs spontaneously reacted to God's beauty. The most fitting word that comes to their minds at this exciting time was holy. John recorded a similar vision in his book of prophecy, Revelation. Revelation 4, 1 through 11. After this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper, and ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald, encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were twenty-four other thrones, and seated on them were twenty-four elders. They were dressed in white, and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. In front of the throne seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also, in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center, around the throne, were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the twenty-four elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being." See how the theme of beauty and holiness is repeated here over 800 years after Isaiah's glimpse of heaven? God's appearance is likened to jasper and carnelian, which are both rich orange-red stones, warm like the color of fire and strong rather than soft like a pastel. In like manner, other scripture bears out the warmth and might of God, describing him as a consuming fire. 
as in Hebrews 12, 29, and our strength, as in Psalm 46, 1. John mentions a rainbow encircling the throne, but then he says it looks like an emerald in Revelation 4, 3. Rainbows are a lovely display of all hues, and the brilliant green of the emerald is in the exact center of the visible light spectrum's order of color. Remember your high school physical science? Red, orange, yellow, green in the middle, then blue, indigo, and violet. So John sees all the colors, yet he specifically mentions the one in the center. In the same way, John saw the entire throne room and all its occupants in heaven, but he was most focused on the beautiful Holy One in the center of it all. How difficult and frustrating it must have been for John to attempt to describe that singular scene because he knew that his readers would never really understand what he witnessed that day. But the words he uses repeatedly point to awesome beauty. Sea of glass, blazing lamps, elders in white, wearing gold crowns. There with the Lord God are creatures unlike any living thing here on earth. Their response to the glory of the Great One is to cry, Holy. Would it not make sense to see someone like this and cry, Beautiful? Why instead the word, Holy? Perhaps it's because while there are many very beautiful things that are not necessarily perfect, anything holy must be perfect in beauty. So the creatures are describing a special kind of loveliness, flawlessness, not only God's appearance, but his very being, clear to the core, is without any fault at all and utterly beautiful beyond words. Oh, holy is the Lord. Defining holiness as without sin may be technically accurate, but somehow the true meaning is left wanting. It's easy to see from Scripture that God is holy, for example, 1 John 1, 5. And that characteristic of his certainly means he's never done anything wrong. But also note that he's holy because he's never neglected to do anything good that should be done. James 4, 17 says, If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is a sin for them. God, who knows all things, certainly knows the good he ought to do. So if scripture says clearly that he's never sinned, he must have always come through to do whatever should have been done. Can you imagine a neglectful God who somehow doesn't quite get around to doing what he ought? Never. Even when we cannot understand why he didn't heal a loved one who suffered and passed away or why he didn't remove the difficulties and barriers in someone's life, we can only conclude from his word that God has always done all the good that he should have done. Put that with never doing anything bad or wrong, and what you have is quite simply beyond fabulous. God is altogether totally beautiful. What earnest Christian wouldn't want to pattern himself after someone like that? The Bible is filled with examples of people who have done so, and you can learn from their successes. You can be like they were. You can be more like your Heavenly Father than you've ever been before. Oh, to be holy. Lord, help us to be holy as you are holy. Holy. 